Thank you, Rosemary. So I just very briefly give some introductory thoughts for this uh, session about uh, cancer screening and early diagnosis in Europe that is based on the work, uh, the, uh, the work package during this epoch. So why the cancer screening is organized and provided for the population? So this is control for cancer, prevent mortality, also incidence for some cancers. And also it is related to improvements in the quality of life because if the cancer is diagnosed early and treated early then also, or even in a pre-cancer phase, so um, uh, also the in treatments can be uh, less invasive than otherwise. But on the other hand, particularly for these developing settings, middle-income countries and low-income countries uh, where still services on healthcare are in the developing phase so that cancer screening also provides a very important platform for planning and sustainable developments on health, in general in healthcare sector because organized screening means also systematic planning, education, training, uh, building up quality assurance for the services, uh, so that this is enhancing also, in many ways, the social developments. There are also adverse effects that relate to early diagnosis and, and also cancer screening that can uh, provide, uh, like earlier diagnosis means also diagnosis of an earlier age, and if the outcome is not affected, then it means more life with cancer. Or another issue is this overdiagnosis, that is one controversial issue, that for those cancers that are nowadays recommended for population-based cancer screening, we have information that the balance between the adverse effects and efficacy is, uh, is acceptable, so, uh, but in, for many other cancers there are still lots to learn. So that this is just efficacy information about those cancers that are uh, recommended nowadays for cancer screening programs. Uh, information for pap smears and effectiveness comes just from, mainly from cohort follow-up studies, but also from studies of uh, whole populations where screening has been run for decades. Information about the effectiveness of breast cancer screening, colorectal cancer screening has been shown in randomized trials and also for breast cancer in service screening programs. For colorectal cancer, we don't know so well yet the outcome because the service screening programs are still in the um, uh, implementation phase and early phase. But even though we have very good evidence about the impact, so there are also problems and controversies. I just take example about cervical cancer screening, that is the oldest known screening uh, program target, targeted cancer. So that when we think about the current burdens, both in the EU and in the old Europe, so that if this 80% or more decrease in mortality would have come true, so that we, would, we should be somewhere at about in the world standardized mortality rate at about one per 100,000 woman years. So in those rich settings like Western Europe and uh, old member states, Southern, Northern Europe, big decrease has or already occur occurred with the activities during the last few decades. Still, with the better organization, there is still lots of improvements that are at, take, at, at stake. But in like new member states, other countries, the Eastern European Union, even though wide-scale screening activities have occurred historically, there is very little yet gained. So that there are really uh, important issues that we need to talk about in an open manner and also problems. Why, where are the barriers then for this effectiveness, effective service? Um, there are many issues. So, for instance, in many countries, a big part of the population does not receive systematic screening, even though, same time, a large population may be even over-screened and screened may be too frequently, so that it is an issue still in decision-makers, in population, medical personnel, that has not reached uh, the basic information about the principles of cancer screening. 
there can be diagnostic errors, like for cervical cancer particularly, pap smear screening is a very, uh, even though it is well known, well characterized, it is quite complicated and there are certain phases like how to do staining, how to take samples, so on, where the service can fail. And this kind of failures in cervical cancer screening in certain regions in Europe may be more common than thought until now. There can be also errors in the confirmation and uh, triaging as well as management. Like management of pre-cancer is also something needs very high quality service and training and also systematic management with the follow-up. Sure, also we have to develop opt optimal treatment of cancers and, and this is a challenge also for the whole Europe. Uh, so that when we think of cancer screening and uh, quality assurance, so the issue is how we can organize the service that it can provide high quality through all these steps, and, but then also assure the quality and give feedback then by monitoring and evaluation of the service in a continuous manner. And wherever there are problems in this phase, then we have to cut tools also to correct the problems. So uh, for this session, uh, we have some introductory thoughts, then a couple of current topics at European level, and I think it is uh, about uh, from the ARC and also from the Joint Research Center to talk about the current efforts in how to promote quality screening. Then we have presentations also about conclusions and work done in the work package projects and also recommend, recommendations as we see right now. And then the round table is based on this ESSM pilot course so that the lecturers will be from the faculty and as well as from the delegates or participants of the course. So I thank very much for the chairs uh, for this and speakers, organizers and also audiences that uh, to come here and I hope that we have now a very good time for active discussions during this session and the day. Thank you very much.